This program is brought to you by TAB. Download the app today. I'm Caroline Searcy, welcome to the final Thoroughbreds Argo for this series. Coming up, we look at the latest work by Racing Victoria's off-the-track program, including the recent Equitana and Show Jumping Championships in Victoria, featuring loads of well-known retired racehorses and retrainers. And Inglis, Australia's historic thoroughbred sales company, sponsoring some wonderful off-track competitions for thoroughbreds, including the exciting Teams event at the Thoroughbred Sport Horse Association's National Championships. And another great example of thoroughbred love that stretches beyond the racetrack in Arrowfield Stud Strapper Stories. That's all coming up on Thoroughbreds Argo. Last week we brought you part one of our look at the inaugural Thoroughbred Sport Horse National Championships with over 270 horses competing over a weekend at Stonewall Equestrian in New South Wales. Here we look at Australia's 155-year-old Thoroughbred sales company Inglis and its whole of life approach to sponsoring initiatives caring for thoroughbreds away from the racetrack. Down, double down, gonna be 600. Come on, come on, stick with it. Bye, break it. Arthur, it's fantastic to see so many people out and about supporting Thoroughbred Sport Horse Association. It's quite an incredible event, the national championships, isn't it? Oh, uh, yes. Look, um, credit to uh, Chrissy Harris and their team for such a wonderful event they put on here it's a magnificent place it's, it's a wonderful spot to be and i think all the competitors are enjoying themselves but it does have as you said has you know very wide industry support so um you know it's a delight to be here and inglis you, you've obviously sponsored the the team's event which was fantastic to see and there's the inglis ring the inglis jump it really is important i guess for no matter whether it's a sales company or a, you know a trainer or anyone in the the business of horse racing and breeding to be really supporting these thoroughbreds away from the track yeah i think you can see the um, support for this type of concept uh spread widely as you say for, from a, a number of different industry areas but yes certainly the breeders oh, anyone who works in the thoroughbred industry and uh, supports it and uh, the, and commercially as well as you can see from the all the num the array of sponsors in behind this event i'll take a 10 round the ring because i'm going to sell him at two hundred and seventy thousand. is there any more and when you look at some of the horses that are competing i mean there's tilly mccarroll on all too royal who was a, an english easter graduate from golden farms a two hundred and seventy thousand dollar yearling now these sorts of horses you know that was an elite horse obviously one over four hundred thousand on the track but they're not all that are they some of them have gone through sales and and you know been worth a lot of money and others haven't even been through a sales ring or been raised at all. No, that's a, that's a wonderful thing about it. It's open to all and, and yes, there are some of these former stars that are starring in this, but uh, some of them have had uh, quite a modest, uh, let's say, career in the uh, in the racing world. There's plenty of opportunity for them ahead. William Hodgkiss, he has a, a horse Verity's boy or Night Flash. He's by Nakupe Par, and I, I find it quite fascinating seeing the different sire lines, the different you know female pedigrees involved in these horses as well. I mean, there's not one particular type that's necessarily throwing the best show jumpers or the best dressage horses, are they? Yes, well, that's right. I can't talk too much about the dressage world, but I know that uh, a fair bit about the show jump world and and as you probably agree there's no there's no uh, obvious show jumper you have to try them all and see how they go 
and like you say, they can be any shape and size and buy out, anything out of anything. That, uh, uh, largely temperament, intelligence and their application to it and of course the uh, skills of the writer and educator. And speaking of the educator, I mean you see through your English sales the enormous dedication and care of all the, the thoroughbred studs and the staff and you know we see tears sometimes when their favourite yearling is sold and leaves the, the stud they work at but that early education, I mean that is all part of what makes these horses so tractable for these sorts of competitions after racing. Absolutely, absolutely, and, you, and we've seen it more in my life uh, over the years, how, how well, as you say, and professionally horses are handled from, basically from foal. And uh, that no doubt, no doubt makes them more suitable for this type of competition. I'm not just speaking about show jumping, of course, but all the other things that thoroughbreds are well suited to. And as you mentioned, some of the sponsors, I mean, John Singleton and Strawberry Hill Start obviously is the major sponsor for this competition. And, and it really is important, I guess, to get that message out to anybody involved in racing and breeding, just to put a little bit in or a lot. And it really makes a difference as far as the prize money for people who, a lot of these people have traveled quite some way and they're there for, you know, three or four days to compete. I feel sure the common denominator is the love of the horse and the wish to see that they have a whole of life experience and they are looked after. Um, after racing, which is which is the key of all of this, and and thanks, as I said before, to Chrissy and Harris and, and her team for leading the way with this, and everyone else for supporting. So I believe there's really a role for the quiet thoroughbred that's come off the track. Um, usually, they've been exposed to so many things. Um, they've been, you know, racing and they've been handled and stabled. They've been taken to many places on and off tracks. They're so well educated that they are. Uh, really fantastic horses. If the temperament is right for a young child, they are match made in heaven. You know, they're quiet, they're tractable, they're trainable and they're dependable. And they're often a lot better than other breeds like the Welsh or, you know, breeds that have actually traditionally been bred for children. The thoroughbred, I bought several recently to go into Centennial Park, for instance. Children, novice children, you know, 11 to 14 that want that horse that can do everything. It's amazing how adaptable they are if their temperament suits a child. What do you look for in a thoroughbred? What are some of the, the things you think, you know, if someone, a young person is looking for a thoroughbred, what do they need to know about the breed? Uh, they need to know that they are, you know, if, once you've got the temperament right, you know, once they're quiet enough, and they've often, if they come, they've come off the track and they've been with a professional rider for a couple of years, they have been so well trained, they've been exposed to everything. They might have done a little bit of dressage, a little bit of eventing, a little bit of show jumping. By that stage, they're absolutely dependable and reliable for a younger novice rider uh, because they're usually just so well exposed to everything. You know, there are different temperaments on thoroughbreds. Some might jump up to be top level eventers, some might end up top dressage horses or show horses, but there's another, there's another category in between, which is a quiet, wonderful horse that might jump up to a metre and do up to elementary dressage that really suits that young child market. Really, really useful in that sort of um, 13 or maybe 11 to 15 year old child bracket. The incentive that Chrissy has begun is actually letting us look at thoroughbreds again. And the more we look at them and the more professional riders think about, you know, opportunities that thoroughbreds can present to them with, with the incentives that Chrissy set up, the more we're going to rediscover the really talented ones that, you know, could take riders all the way to the top. I mean, eventers have always looked at thoroughbreds, but I think we'll see a, a reinsurgence in the show jumping and the dressage world because of incentives like this. Uh, and horses that might have been undiscovered will be found again. The quieter ones that might not be superstars will be rehomed to wonderful homes to teach young riders and amateurs. So it's a really wonderful incentive. It would be my dream and, uh, for it to all come together under one umbrella, but realistically, that's not really what the whole equestrian world is anyway. Uh, yes, we have Equestrian Australia, but as you go from state to state, there's different bodies manage different elements of horse sport. So probably that, if it is manageable, is a long way off. But in the meantime, uh, it would be great to see from the from the industry, from the thoroughbred industry, to have some guidance around an industry budget for this type of event. There's a lot of intelligence behind a thoroughbred and that's probably what makes them so thoughtful with the riders you put on them. If they're well educated, they're actually able to think through the person who's on board 
and offer what that person needs with quite a lot of kindness and that really is an amazing attribute to the breed because other breeds and Arab very very sensitive and and hot can be very difficult for a lot of riders the same with the Welsh uh, warm bloods can be too complicated and too much horse where a thoroughbred really does seem to think through who's on board and that's an amazing attribute and it's obviously growing I mean what Chrissy and the the team there at thoroughbred sport horse have done and, and everyone else doing similar competitions there really does feel like there's a massive groundswell of support and of course more interest in how we treat our thoroughbreds away from racing it just seems to be getting bigger and bigger yeah very true to say and and long may it continue you're, you're right uh, it, I've, I've observed it growing the support for it growing and, and their number of horses competing and so forth and the quality of competition continues to grow so long may it thrive. What she's done with the six bar, she set a world record now for thoroughbreds in a six bar at a metre 75 which is an incredible height and when that starts to get out will we see America, will we see England putting on thoroughbred only six bars challenges and shows like this. Chrissy might revolutionise the world and refocus our interest on the thoroughbred and its usefulness after racing. Racing Victoria continues to fine-tune its off-track programs and was front and centre at the recent Equitana show and the Bonio Show Jumping Championships. So what's in store for the future as far as finding new homes for our thoroughbreds away from racing? It's incredible, isn't it? The off-the-track program from Racing Victoria. It's, it's 10 years now that you've been operating and you've made some wonderful achievements helping thoroughbreds away from racing. Yes, Caroline. It seems incredible that uh, Off the Track is actually celebrating 10 years in 2022. We're really proud of this program and we're proud that it's been um, in action for 10 years. And we've celebrated it all throughout this year with all our activations and all our events. We've got a special OTT celebrating 10 years logo, our merchandise. Uh, we've activated with all our community to inform them and, and to educate that we have been around for 10 years and, and we intend to be around for many more decades to come. The important thing, I guess, that we're seeing right around Australia is to forge links with the equestrian community. So whether it be EA, Equestrian Australia, or, you know, in your case, Equestrian Victoria, I mean, the amount of horses that you're getting competing, thoroughbreds competing at equestrian events is astronomical now. Yes, that's right, Caroline. So in Victoria, we have some wonderful equestrian partners who we work really closely with. As you mentioned, Equestrian Victoria, Bonio Park, Always Pony Club Victoria, HRCAV, and even in the more non-competitive space like uh, the Riding for the Disabled and Equine Pathways Australia, they're really, really engaged partners who are always looking to support off-the-track thoroughbreds in their, in their second post-racing careers. And as you mentioned, I mean, something like Equine Pathways Australia, Warren Moore and Julia Battams, they do such a wonderful job and Riding for Disabled, highlighting that thoroughbreds don't just have to go into those competitive environments, do they? That's exactly right. So we've got some wonderful partners uh, in Riding for the Disabled and Equine Pathways Australia um, who are in that non-competitive space. And, and that's one of our really main objectives in the OTT program is to support non-competitive thoroughbreds in their pursuit. So that might include trail riding, uh, riding schools and equine therapy. And we've really been able to support those, uh, those disciplines through our equine business grants program, where we're working with local businesses, um, providing them some grant funding support and encouraging them to take on more retired thoroughbreds in their business operations and their everyday. Express eventing is pretty much like a modified eventing um, made for the crowds really, so that we can do it in an arena. We don't have a dressage phase, it's just a combination of show jumps and cross country jumps and it's basically against the clock. 
And it is about really supporting the equestrian events as well. You know, we, we really are seeing it all around Australia with prize money for these competitions. It really does incentivise riders to, to think about taking on a thoroughbred. And, and if you look at something like Equitana, just held recently in Victoria, just an incredible competition, including your exhibition stand, you, you were educating people, and you even had eventing jumps as well. And, and it was really great to see such engagement from so many of the, the Victorian public generally. Equitana that was recently held at the Royal Melbourne Showgrounds was a wonderful huge event for all things horse including OTTs and we had a wonderful trade stand where we saw literally thousands of OTT owners every single day come up and speak to us proudly telling us about their off-the-track horses and and what they were doing with them. Uh, we were, were really thrilled to support the Express Eventing class, which was a wonderful exhibition of um, some really top class OTTs. Uh, Shane Rose competed and of course Sophia Hill. Secret Mojo is one of our favourite OTTs with Murray Lampard. And we also were able to run four educational sessions. The level of engagement overall at Equitana was fantastic. And then at Bonio Park, as you mentioned, you have such a great association there, but the Australian Show Jumping Championships, I mean, we're actually seeing a lot of the development of thoroughbreds at junior levels of show jumping, but they're really quite quickly graduating to more elite levels, aren't they? We absolutely love working with Fiona Selby at Bonio Park. She is such a wonderful supporter of all our OTT programs. She's never short of a new idea. And we've recently supported the Australian Show Jumping Championships, which is just a, such a flagship event. Uh, and it's so wonderful to see off the track thoroughbreds on the big stage with all the big show jumpers. But we are really excited to announce in the new year uh, a new Rising Star event which is a series for off the track show jumpers who have just retired in the last two years. It'll be a maximum height of 80 centimetres and, and we've received feedback from off the track riders that they feel like, you know, there's a little bit more of a niche to support, I guess, newcomer off the track horses. So we're all about always improving and carving out new initiatives for our OTT. So if we can uh, improve them in any way, we're always open to it. And we love working with people like Fiona to make those things happen. I'm really interested in this because it is for studbook registered thoroughbreds that last raced or, or trialled in the last two years uh, before the event. And it's really important because, you know, a lot of people taking on thoroughbreds uh, as a new horse, it's hard to compete against the horses that have been show jumping for four or five years. So you, you sort of had the best of both worlds for the, the novices and the experienced horses. That's exactly right. We really want to support and create events for recently retired thoroughbreds who are still a little bit green to show jumping and are learning the ropes and learning the, the show jumping skill. So to put on classes like this uh, Rising Star series is really about supporting those off the track riders and those newcomer horses. And of course, another of the uh, three day event disciplines and, and, and a wonderful competition in its own right is of course dressage. So you've, you've started off a new series of events with, and it's fantastic prize money, $7,000 overall, but 2,000 for the, the novice and preliminary winners. That is really good prize money when you're traveling horses and trying to compete in these events. Yeah, that's right. The off the track dressage series um, is back again in 2022 and 2023. Uh, we love supporting uh, those prelim and novice classes for off the track thoroughbreds. That's really, you know, that's the grassroots of dressage and it's really where we, get, we see big numbers of competitors. And, you know, it's, it's always really hard to compete against a flashy purpose bred warm blood. And we want to support our off the trackers to really compete, I guess, apples against apples and to be able to succeed and compete successfully against other like-minded thoroughbreds and their owners. And Mel, I'm really interested, the, the OTT community, this is just fantastic because, you know, it, it can be hard in the equestrian world. Obviously, a lot of it's done by volunteers and it's hard to know when events are on and what's happening and what's coming up. But explain a bit about how you can help some of the, the thoroughbred riders to find the right events for their thoroughbreds. Yes, yeah, so the Off The Track community, which is ottcommunity.com.au, is our one-stop shop and home of all things post-racing and all of Racing Victoria's post-racing programs. So we always encourage OTT owners and riders to head to the platform. Uh, you can claim your horse on there, any of our programs you can nominate for on there. And we've got a one-stop shop with all our events, our sponsored events and the upcoming um, calendar. So 
So owners and trainers can plan their campaign for their off-the-trackers and know what events they're really trying to target. Racing Victoria is, is a really good example, I guess, to some of the smaller states of, of what can be done. You know, you're achieving so much for so many thoroughbreds and, you know, for racing owners to find good homes and, and for the people taking them on. But obviously some of the smaller states don't have the, the same sort of prize money contributions to work with. But, but what do you see overall as some of the things that they can learn from, from what you're doing? Well, we are always happy to um, work with different PRAs and different organisations to share our learnings. We, we don't always get it right in the first instance, but we're always trying to improve and, and build on what we've done previously. What I do know is there are a lot of people out there who are super passionate about welfare and retired racehorses and, and post-racing careers, whether that be different equestrian organisations or retrainers uh, or just experienced horse people. So my advice would be to work really closely with them, uh, to tap into their knowledge and just to see what you can build on uh, collectively towards a really great goal and a, and a great cause. You know, it is about the optics. It's about actually physically doing something for thoroughbreds, but it is also about how it comes across to people. You know, the anti-racing brigade. We saw uh, kick up for racing started through the Melbourne Cup Carnival just to try and have some facts and figures to give back to people. You know, when they when they're criticising the industry and, and and the promotions that you do and being so visible, it is so important, isn't it? It is. It's really important. The work that. Um, the off the track community does in providing really wonderful post racing careers is something that we always need to communicate and tell the wider public about. Uh, at Racing Victoria alone we have a network of over 50 acknowledged retrainers and collectively they retrain over 500 horses a year uh, which we always think is a really great number. We've always got room to grow but it's so many horses getting such a great start once they retire from racing and, and heading into their next career. Some great support for rehoming thoroughbreds in Victoria. Coming up after the break, Arrowfield Studs, Strapper Stories. just such a beautiful quiet horse um, at the track and such a, a lovely type um, everyone comments on him now what a beautiful what a beautiful type of horse he is so and his temperament that drew me to him he was just not a top top level racehorse and he was quite lightly raced for his age he retired sound luckily um, his owners just decided that his heart wasn't in it anymore and luckily Toby recommended that he just be retired not sold on um, so I was lucky enough to take him five years ago last week. Um, he was a bit of a late birthday present actually, so it's pretty good. He's just taken to jumping so well and he's jumped fantastically the first two days here at Stonewall. It's really nice, the European blood in him. Um, I think that is a lot of the reason why he's such a beautiful type of horse, so well bred. And he has a lot of scope. He's got a great style over the jumps. Um, he is a bit quirky, like he's very horse shy and very shy of everything in the warm up. Um, but once he gets in the ring, he's, he's really professional and he makes a beautiful shape over the jumps. Um, and yeah, he's, he's jumped some super rounds here this weekend. I'm really happy with him. Well, YPO was my absolute favourite of all time. Um, I strapped him just about every start of his career until I until I left the stables for something to do something different. He was such such a good racehorse. So he beat Pirata, went on to win multiple Group Ones. He raced at Magic Millions three-year-old guineas out to 1,400 metres, which he was probably at his top at 1,200. Um, he was just such a great horse. He had a few soundness issues. He got to the point in his racing career where he wasn't able to race at the top level and he wasn't suited to be sold on somewhere else. And I'm really grateful to his owners to allowing him to retire with me. And One Inch Punch has already had a pretty successful career, but he's definitely got a bit more to go. That is Thoroughbreds Argo for another series and it's been so great to bring you so many stories about people caring for our thoroughbreds away from the racetrack. Thanks to our major sponsor Tab and all our other sponsors of Thoroughbreds Argo, I look forward to returning in the new year with another series. I'm Caroline Searcy, I'll see you then.
This program is brought to you by TAB. Download the app today.